Chirenge bendi chatu tieni tichisamale Mkalango nyanja nyama za kuchire zofunika Tisamale mapili titari mombi tengu So ibaza kumafaki tale titaye mosamala Taka yoli mayakuka, ndiku kopoloka Vula ikufuta, tiko likute ntedwa So sezi chifu kwa chaku onongeka kwa chirengedwe Abo mama bungwe, amipingo makampani Tirindi udindo, potete za chirengedwe Politics in Malawi makes headlines in the electronic and print media. It is so rare to see a headline on climate on the first page unless a natural disaster has occurred. Education in Malawi traditionally consists of formal academic training at primary, secondary and tertiary levels. This is part of the sector's strategies for increasing access in line with the Millennium Development Goal, MDG, and Education for All, EFA goals. At Chancellor College in the Faculty of Science, we have uh, a program that is specifically focused on the environmental issues at the master's level, which began uh, in the late 1990s. And uh, we thought we haven't got uh, enough capacity uh, at the workplace. We haven't got capacity at various levels in the country beyond secondary school. And so Chancellor College saw an opportunity uh, in introducing this program at postgraduate level, which uh, combines theory as well as the practical applications. Uh, we wanted to fill the gap which we saw in dealing with the environmental issues at the teacher level. Aspects of environmental education and awareness takes place at both the formal education level and non-formal level through awareness campaigns. Uh, the Catholic Commission uh, has been implementing the environmental action-based learning pilot project in Sarima district. First output is capacity building and the second output is in the uh, development of additional learning materials and then we have uh, um, development of uh, action competence of pupils and of course the last one is uh, raising awareness within the sector about the environment action of based learning project. Science and wildlife clubs and the media are some of the other venues for awareness campaigns in schools among community members. Environmental education and public awareness has in recent years taken a central role in the conservation and protection of the environment. The environment is a part and parcel of uh, uh, our daily lives. And in its totality, we are confronted from uh, a number of angles in our daily lives. And because the environment forms a very significant part of uh, the life of each and every individual, it is uh, only necessary and important that uh, <coughs> we learn about the environment other than just simply thinking that it's one of those things. Uh, sometimes there are things that happen and we think perhaps we don't think about them because they are so much part of us. But uh, with respect to the environment, it is necessary that we raise the capacity of people to some optimum level at which uh, we are conscious because the actions that we undertake or the actions that other things do and of course what the environment can do when it decides to give up uh, will have significant effects in the way that we live our lives and so it would be good if we raise awareness and the people know that we can harm the environment, but also the environment can harm us. Apart from having it on the education curricula, it is interesting to note the number of mushrooming non-governmental organizations, community-based groups that continue to play an important role in including the media to reach out to the wider public. We are trying to conserve a resource which is surrounded by communities, communities that are 
in most cases uh, uh, rural based, most of whom are deriving a livelihood more or less uh, from the resources, from what they're harvesting from the, the forest. So it's quite a challenge because there is a lot of pressure. There are so many people chasing very few resources. One challenge. The other challenge is, uh, you know, uh, being a forest reserve, a protected area, um, many people want to get there and do what they want. Uh, that's not bad, but when they harvest resources, you know, willy-nilly, it becomes an issue, it becomes a challenge, and we are trying to grapple with that. How best can we address that challenge? The other challenge is, uh, um, again, as a conservation area, we are faced with uh, some what we call invasive alien species. These are plants or sometimes animals. Mostly in our case are plants that are not native to the forest and they're coming maybe from uh, distant places, normally not from the country, from Malawi, but uh, from outside the country. And when they come and uh, start growing in there, they naturalize and start to outcompete uh, the indigenous uh, vegetation as it were. Since we started, we've been talking to people, engaging them one way or the other. One of the aspects that I, uh, they are involved in is to help with the firebreak maintenance, for instance. Of course, they are employed on a wage uh, labor basis, uh, but by engaging them in this particular manner, they also know why we are doing this. And they, by, by, by and by, we're beginning to have some buy-ins because uh, some communities have come forth willingly to say, we want to do this. Can you give us an area to work? We've got communities that are co-managing the forest uh, in certain places. I think uh, there are about eight communities that, are, that have got co-management agreements with forestry department. They are trying to work in their respective areas, you know, conserving the forest as it were, but also deriving a benefit one way or the other. In order to understand the linkage between education and environmental management and awareness, it is important to examine the kind of education and awareness currently on offer in the country. There are over 13 radio stations. The main stations with national coverage are the state-owned Malawi Broadcasting Corporation and privately owned Zodiac Broadcasting Station. There are also several newspapers of which The Nation Publications and Blanta Newspapers are the leading privately owned daily and weekly publications. There are also various magazines published in a monthly and quarterly basis on diverse topics. Um, the news coverage in, in the country focuses on politics and sports and these other um, uh, uh, selling uh, bits. Environment is not a, such a selling bit and uh, uh, somebody who concentrates on writing environment uh, is very unlikely to, 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 to make a name for themselves. So you find that there's very local interest among, among the journalists and I think uh, at both, both at the reporting and editing level and I think that's one of the things that I think we face. I think we need um, to make uh, the beat very attractive because the environmental issues are very, very important. We're talking about survival of, um, of people, we're, um, talking about survival of of the world itself, so I think it's a very important bit, but the problem is, as I said earlier, there isn't that much interest and there, is, there isn't a lot of expertise within the media to cover um, the issues that uh, attack on the environmental affairs. Well, I was privileged, I think, in um, 2009 uh, to be among the editors in The Hague in the preparation, no, no, in, 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 um, in Denmark, Copenhagen, uh, in, the, in the build up to the uh, World Summit on, uh, on, on, on climate change, where we, we, we discovered that it's, it's, a, it's a, a global problem within the media, that uh, media people don't actually appreciate what climate change is all about, how it's going to affect their own lives. Um, I think if uh, we, as, as human beings, before we are journalists, we're human beings, and we need to ensure that um, the, the, the world that we live in is, uh, is there, is sustainable for our children, for, for their children, for posterity. And I think unless we make people realize that, it will, be, it will become a, a, a big challenge. So I think the, the, the biggest challenge is, to, is for journalists to realize that as human beings, they live in a world that is under threat. Once we realize that, I think it, it will become very imperative for people yeah, to take those issues seriously and uh, do whatever they can to mitigate the, uh, against the effects of climate change. The importance of educating all people in order to achieve sustainable development and poverty reduction is highlighted by MDG number two, 
Further, it takes literate citizens to contribute to the achievement of the rest of the MDGs, including ending poverty and hunger, gender equality, reduced infant and maternal mortality rates, combating HIV and AIDS, achieving environmental sustainability, and achieving global partnerships. The areas of emphasis in education are increasing access and retention, improving quality and relevance, improving equity, management and supervision, and training of teachers. It is expected that relevant education would include environmental education and awareness, as recommended by the African Ministerial Conference on Environment. The mainstreaming of environmental education in curricula is indicative of Malawi's commitment to achieving environmental education and awareness through formal education. However, the fulfillment of this commitment depends on the quality of teaching and learning in schools. Quality of education is influenced by many factors, including the availability of human and material resources. Non-formal education is offered by the government and non-governmental organizations. Clubs and societies in primary, secondary, and tertiary education institutions are often used to achieve incidental learning. Well, uh, the word herbarium and botanical gardens, there are two technical terms there. The herbarium, simply put, it refers to a collection of dried plant specimens, and the botanical gardens refers to a collection of living plant specimens. Now, I think in short, for the dried plant specimens, it's a a documentation of the plant diversity in terms of their abundance, uh, distribution, uh, their association. Uh, we also study their uses and we have all those botanical records even from as early as 1920s. I think this is the only institution that has got such old botanical records which we have in the herbarium as I was talking to you earlier on. Now here in the botanical garden, we have, as you can see all around us, we have all these plants that are living and they are here for different reasons. Uh, for example, in here, there are some plants that are endemic to Malawi that have been threatened in their, threatened in their original habitats. So we are preserving them here. We can propagate them and uh, later on put them back into their a natural habitat and some of the plants are, uh, restrict, have restricted distribution but also some of the plants are found only in specific areas uh, for education purposes for example we have samples of the Mulanja cedar when students here uh, come here not all of them have had a chance to go up to the Mulanja we can show them some of those plants that we find here in the Brandon Gardens Wildlife clubs are also available in some primary and secondary schools, although they are almost non-existent in tertiary education institutions. One of the non-governmental organizations involved in environmental education and awareness is Wildlife and Environmental Society of Malawi, WESM. Its role is not only to register the clubs, but coordinate their activities and conduct environmental education and awareness campaigns. As such, WESM encourages club members to visit national parks and wildlife reserves where they are given public lectures, play environment games and take tours that teach them about environmental challenges. Science fairs and competitions, implemented in the early 1990s, served as a way of strengthening the activities of science clubs, most of which had activities relevant to environmental management. These were discontinued in the late 90s, but the newly established National Commission of Science and Technology has resumed these activities. The primary challenge in the education formal and non-formal is extending environmental education to all sectors of society. But what should be done to enhance environmental education with a view to achieve sustainable development in Malawi? What needs to be incorporated into this challenge is the need to train teachers in environmental awareness, improve adult literacy and environmental education, but also to incorporate environment in technical and entrepreneurial activities. Many opportunities are bound to improve awareness of environmental issues if EE is integrated in the curricula for secondary teaching training, building the capacity of educators. There is need for more schools and tertiary education institutions to be encouraged to form science and wildlife clubs to build interest in the environment and enrollment issues should be included in technical and vocational education curricula to facilitate the use of more sustainable building material and practices. 
Media personnel and religious leaders should be trained on environmental aspects as they have a large influence on people at grassroots level.